Uh, in Galatians chapter number two, we are continuing there with our thoughts and our study in the book of Galatians. We <coughs> have been looking at here, beginning in verse 11, how the apostle Paul withstood uh, Peter to the face because he was to be blamed, because he was basically fellowshipping with Gentile believers until the Jewish believers came along. And then he would separate himself from the Gentile believers to be able to be with the Jewish believers and basically shunning the Gentile believers, which is not good or right in any sense of anyone's imagination as believers in Christ because the Bible says we are all one in Jesus Christ. There are no Jews or Gentiles. There are no even men or women. We are all one in Jesus Christ. We are all children of God. And Peter was denying the unity of the faith by separating himself from those Gentile believers to those Jewish believers. His actions were speaking loud and his actions were denying many important doctrines of the Christian faith. And the second one we started to look at last week was of that being justified by faith. There in verse 14 we read, <coughs> Galatians chapter 2 and verse 14, But when I saw that they walked up uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter before them all, if thou being a Jew, livest after the manner of Gentiles, and not as do the Jews, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? We who are Jews by nature are not sinners of the Gentiles, knowing that a man is not justified by the work, works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. But and if while ye seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners. Is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. Father, we again thank you for your word and... <coughs> Pray now, Father, that you will work and bless, dear Father, in the message tonight. We pray we may grow in grace and in the knowledge of Christ, understanding these important teachings and doctrines that we find in your wonderful book, the Bible. We pray, dear Father, that you will just touch our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. We saw last week the first appearance of being justified by faith found here in Galatians chapter 2. We saw that Job in Job chapter 9 and verse 2 asked the question, can a man, basically, can a man stand justified before God? An important question, a vital question to be able to ask. This answer determines eternal consequences. In Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse number 4, the Bible says there that the just shall live by his faith. If we are to stand just before God, we must do so by faith. And not by what we do. Not by trying to keep the law of Moses. Which I've never met a man who could. I know of one who did, but he was the God-man, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I haven't met him personally yet in the flesh, but one day I will. And it was this truth that the just shall live by his faith that liberated the great reformer Martin Luther from religious bondage and fear motivated him to take his 99 theses and hammer them upon the door of the Catholic Church and to leave the Catholic Church, 
to start what we know in church history as the Protestant Reformation. Baptists, we weren't part of the Protestant Reformation. We had nothing to protest. Because we already lived by faith. <coughs> so important is this teaching and this concept of justification by faith. We found that three books are in the New Testament are used to explain it. The book of Romans, which talks about who the just are. The book of Galatians that we are studying, how they should live. And the book of Hebrews, the live by faith. And that phrase, the just shall live by faith, is found in each and every one of these books. We started last week, and, or finished last week, and we will start again this week, but with the question, what is justification? I gave you this definition last week, that justification is the act of God whereby he declares the believing sinner righteous in Jesus Christ. Every word of this definition is important and has significance. The thing that we notice about justification, that it is an act and not a process. A one-time act that God does. For those who confess their sins and trust him as Savior. No Christian is more justified than another Christian. I am not more justified than you. You are not more justified than me in Christ. We all have the same standing. We all stand on a level ground and a level playing field. I love level playing fields. Gives the underdog a fighting chance. That's why I love level playing fields. <coughs> In Romans chapter 5 and verse 1, the Bible says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Being justified by faith is a once and for all act of God. And it happens immediately when we trust Christ as our personal Savior. It is one of those things that happens. We are forgiven of our sins. We have the gift of eternal life that is given to us through Jesus Christ. And we stand justified before God by our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Once and for all. When we give our heart and life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, this is an act and not a process. Sanctification is a process that we go through. Which makes us more like Christ each and every single day. But that is a process, not a one-time act. <clears throat> justification is a one-time act. And since we are justified by faith, it's an instant and immediate transaction between the believing sinner and God. If we are justified by the works of the law, if we were to be justified by the works of the law, then that would be a gradual process that we would never be able to obtain or achieve true justification by faith because it would not be of faith. It would be of what we do or of works. <coughs> Furthermore, we see that justification is an act of God. It is not the result of our character or our works. The Bible tells us in the book of Romans, in Romans chapter 8, and verse number 33. <coughs> Romans chapter 8, and verse number 33. One of the great chapters to be found in the Word of God. It has been said that a preacher can start preaching in Romans chapter 8, and verse number 1, and spend his entire ministry and lifetime preaching through Romans Chapter 8, it is so rich and so deep in knowledge and teaching and doctrine. But in Romans chapter 8 and in verse 33, the Bible says, 
Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. We don't justify ourselves. Other men do not justify us. It is God that justifies us. It's an act of God. It is not by doing the works of the law that the sinner gets a right standing before God, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by, faith, by the faith of Jesus Christ. <coughs> But by putting our faith in Jesus Christ, do we have a right standing with God? As Paul will teach us later here in this letter of Galatians, the law was given, the law as given, or was given, to reveal sin and not to redeem us from sin. The law was given to us to show us that we have broken the law of God. And that we are sinners because of it. God never designed his law to save us. If he did, he would, have made it, he would have made it easier for us to follow. But since I was born with a nature of sin, I had two strikes against me when I came out of my mother's womb. And all of us did. Because there would have eventually come a time in our life where we would be held accountable to an almighty God. And everyone comes to that point in their life when a person knows the difference between what is right and what is wrong, they can know what sin is. And when you know what sin is, you become accountable to the almighty God. Because you know you're breaking God's law. When you know you're doing wrong, you become accountable to God. That being the case, I put stuff before God when I was really young. I disobeyed my parents when I was really young. If my parents were here to testify, they would testify to that fact. Even though I never killed anyone, I did want to strangle my brother once or twice <laughs> and threaten my sister two or three times. That shows in my heart that I wanted to kill them. And God calls that act just as good as killing. In the book of Romans chapter 3 and verse number 20, as we go back to Romans, Romans chapter 3 and verse number 20. <coughs> Excuse me. The Bible tells us there in Romans chapter 3 and verse 20, Therefore by the deeds of the law there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. God in his grace has put our sins on Christ and Christ's righteousness has been put to our account. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 21, the Bible says that he was made sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. The only way that we can stand justified before God, the only way we can have any right standing with God is through the Lord Jesus Christ. And we can only do that by faith. <coughs> In the act of justification, God declares the believing sinner righteous. God doesn't make him righteous. You have to notice that. He declares him righteous. There's a difference. Of course, real justification leads to a changed life. If we are truly justified by our faith, then God changes our life from the inside out. 
makes us new creatures in Christ. And this is what the subject of James chapter 2 is. When he talks about faith without works is dead being alone. We are not, <coughs> we do not find a right standing by what we do before God. But what we do for God tells other people that we are saved and born again Christians. James there in James chapter 2 tells us, Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show you my faith by my works. I work for the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't work for the Lord Jesus Christ so that one day I will get saved. I work for the Lord Jesus Christ because I love my Lord and he has done so much for me. And through those works, I testify to others that I am a child of God and a born-again Christian. Otherwise, how are people going to know? Unless I show them my secret agent badge <laughs> and my Dakota ring. If you send in six box tops, you can get the Dakota ring. How are people going to know that I have a relationship with God unless I do something for my Savior to show them? I don't work to get saved. I work because I am saved. And that should be the way in every believer's life. See, before the sinner trusts Christ as their personal Savior, he stands guilty before God. God has declared both Jews and Gentiles guilty of sin. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But the moment that the sinner trusts Christ as his personal Savior, God declares him not guilty anymore. His sins have been forgiven. The blood of Christ has cleansed his soul from all sin. He has imputed his righteousness to his account. So he declares the sinner not guilty. And he can never be called guilty again. Because the righteous judge has declared them justified by faith. Justification is not simply forgiveness. Because a person could be forgiven of their sin. And then go out and sin. And become guilty. <coughs> I hate to pick on them, but, you know, our, our friends who go to the priest on Saturday and confess their sins to the priest on Saturday and get forgiveness from the priest for their sins, go to Mass on Sunday, get their heart right with God, go out on Monday and commit the same sins that they confessed to the priest last Saturday and live their life that way. That's not truly being justified by faith. It's not simply forgiveness. Justification is not. Because once you have been justified by faith, you can never be held guilty before God. You can't be tried for the same sins that God has forgiven you of. No double jeopardy. Now, you can be tried for sins that you have committed since you've been saved. They're new. 
But the ones that are under the blood cannot be touched. That's why it's good for us to be able to confess our sins so that God can be faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So all of our sins are under the blood. We're confessed up. Justification is also different from being pardoned. Because a pardoned criminal still has a record. When the sinner is justified by faith, his past sins are remembered against him no more. The record has been wiped clean. They're gone. God no longer puts his sins on record. The psalmist writes in Psalm 32 and verses 1 and 2. Psalm 32 and verses 1 and 2. The Bible tells us there, Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no guile. Going back to Romans, in Romans chapter 4, the Apostle Paul uses there the life of Abraham as an example of being justified by faith. There in Romans chapter 4 and verse 1. What shall we say then that Abraham our father as pertaining to the flesh hath found? For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him, that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Even as David also described the blessedness of man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man whom the Lord will not <coughs> impute sin. Finally, we see that God justifies sinners, not good people. Put that in quotes. Paul declares, as we read there in Romans 4 and verse 5, that God justifies the ungodly. And that Christ died for the ungodly. In Romans chapter 5. The reason why most sinners are not justified is because they will not admit that they are sinners. It's so hard today to get someone to confess that they have broken the law of God and that they are sinners. In fact, you've got to get most people lost before you can get them saved. They're so far in the weeds, they don't even know they're lost. Sin has had such a corrupting Influence upon our society. Wrong is right and right is wrong. Sins are celebrated. <laughs> flaunted. Rather than being shameful. As they once were.
And sinners are the only kind of people that Jesus can save. In the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 9, in verse number 9 through verse number 13, Matthew chapter number 9. Beginning there in verse 9. <coughs> and as Jesus passed forth from thence, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the receipt of custom... And saith unto him, Follow me. And he arose and followed him. And it came to pass, as Jesus sat at meat in the house, behold, many publicans and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto his disciples, Why eateth your master with publicans and sinners? But when Jesus heard that, he said unto them, They that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. Go ye and learn what this meaneth, and I will have mercy and not sacrifice. For I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners, to repentance. In the Gospel of Luke, chapter 18, and verses 9 through 14, I believe there Jesus shares the parable of the publican and the sinner, or the Pharisee and the publican. Luke chapter 18, verse number 9. <coughs> and he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Two men went into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, even as this publican. I fast twice in the week, and I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican, standing afar off, would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man, went down to his house justified rather than the other. The publican went back to his house justified rather than the Pharisee. For everyone that, is, that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. So many people, it seems today, are trusting in their own righteousness. Which the Bible says is not worth anything more than filthy rags in the sight of God. They justify themselves. I'm a good person. I'm good enough, I'm smart enough, and doggone it, people like me. They say to themselves, I'm a good person. God would not punish me for what I have done because I'm such a good person. It's exactly what this Pharisee prayed. But I want you to notice that this Pharisee prayed with himself. He thought he was praying to God, but the reality is he's praying with himself. God had nothing to do with the Pharisee's prayer. Because the Pharisee was boasting of how good he was. I'm such a great guy, just ask me. I do wonderful things for you, God. I thank you, God, that I'm not like other men. That I'm not an extortioner and I'm not unjust and I'm not an adulterer or even as this publican over here. The Pharisee said, I'm better than this guy. 
because he said, I'm glad I'm not like you. When Peter separated himself from the Gentile believers to go and hang out with the Jewish believers, he was telling the Gentile believers, the Jewish believers are better than you. And in the family of God, there's no one, any, there's no one better and there's no one worse. We're all the same. Sinner saved by the grace of God. It was the publican who had humbled himself before the Almighty God. Who said he wasn't worthy of the Almighty God. Who said, Lord, I want you to be merciful to me because I have broken your law. I am a sinner. The publican went back to his house justified in the eyes of God. Because of the faith that he had in God to forgive him of his sins. The Pharisee wouldn't even admit that he was a sinner. When Peter separated himself from the Gentiles, he was denying the truth of justification by faith because Peter was saying, we Jews are different and better than the Gentiles. And that is just not true. Because the Bible tells us that yet both Jews and Gentiles are sinners. Again, in Romans chapter 3 and verse number 22. <coughs> I have to turn there because I haven't memorized that verse. Romans chapter 3 and verse 22, even the righteousness of God which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And the sinner can only be saved by faith in Jesus Christ. And that's all. The only way to heaven, the only way of forgiveness, the only way to stand justified before the Almighty God is by faith in Jesus Christ. Because we do not stand before the Almighty God in our own righteousness. We stand in the righteousness of our Savior Jesus Christ. That is what makes us justified by faith and nothing else. It's not what we've done. It's what Christ has done for us. And when we go through our days and we go through our life, we must remind ourselves from time to time that we are no better than anyone else. We are all sinners in need of a Savior. Some have accepted Christ as their Savior, so they're sinners saved by the grace of God. Still sinners, but saved by the grace of God. Those who do not know Christ as Savior, who are lost, they are sinners outside of the grace of God. And we can open the door for them. To tell them of Christ and his great love. So they have the opportunity to walk through the door. To become justified by faith. In Jesus Christ. I appreciate your time. My time is well spent.